Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are here to set up our monthly budget for the month of April 2021. I'm going to be using my Planning to Prosper budget planner. I do have my budget planner as well as all of the budget stickers and inserts available in my Etsy shop, which I have linked down below for you guys. And I also recommend if you have not watched it already, I would watch the Prosper Budget Method Explained video that just went up a couple days ago this past Sunday before watching this video potentially because we're kind of switching up things a little bit not entirely because we've kind of always done this but now it's more like official I guess you could say so yeah, so we're gonna just get started by setting up our monthly view as per usual. I'm gonna speed through that process. I'll put on some music for you guys and then we're gonna come back and get our monthly budget set up. We're also going to be stuffing our cash envelopes for the month today, so lots to get through. So let's go ahead and get started by getting the monthly view set up and ready to go. ready to go. In case you're curious, I am using the Spring Showers budget sticker set as well as the budget inserts from my Etsy shop. So if you're interested in using the same one, that is the name of it, Spring Showers. There's a couple other ones that you can choose from for April as well. I chose this one because this definitely does remind me a little bit of like spring showers, just the colors. And then this washi in particular just reminds me of like heavy rain falling down and that kind of stuff. And I just loved 
the colors in this kit. Loved it so much. So the quote that I chose for this month is someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago by Warren Buffett. I personally really love that quote. It reminds me that every decision that my husband and I make today affects our future and our daughter's future later on down the road and so that's just a good reminder and yeah so that's what I chose I wrote in all of my bills I knew the exact amounts for all of the bills with the exception of T-Mobile and APS electricity I have not received those bills so I don't know what to expect as far as the amounts are concerned there so I'll just fill those in once the bills arrive and then we're going to be setting up the monthly budget the um, business budget, income tracker, savings tracker over here. So there's actually 10 spots in this little index over here, but I'm only going to be using four of them. Today we're going to focus on the monthly budget, and then I'm also going to set up the savings tracker with you guys, and I'll let you know what um, our current balances are and our savings and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and dive into it and get started because, yeah, we have a lot to do, you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to get started by pulling up my inserts. And I need to go back to my April kits and spring showers budget bundle inserts. And there we go. Okay, so on this side over here, I am going to use the Prosper Budget Method, and I'm going to use the monthly Schedule A. That is the one that our family is going to be using. Let me just zoom out a little bit, and we'll get this to fit on the page. There we go. I think that looks good. Perfect. And then on the other side, I am going to put the weekly check-in. So I'm going to be using my planner sidekick moving forward to track transactions and everything. Um, I think that'll work out really nicely so you guys will see that during the week one check-in which will be this upcoming Thursday. So the weekly check-in page is good to go and then let's go ahead and start filling in our monthly budget. I'm just going to close this for a moment and we will go to portrait and we'll start filling everything in and I'll make sure that that is in frame. Okay, so as far as income is concerned for the month, I've got my little rough draft budget over here. So part of the Prosper budget method, method is getting one month ahead. So our income that I'm gonna put in here right now is the income that we earned in the month of March between my full-time job as well as my business. So that amount that we're gonna be working with this month and it was transferred over, and that is way too thick. Let me change my pen here. So that amount is, or I'm sorry, the date is the 1st of April is when we transferred that over. And that was, again, our March income. And I personally, as I'm saving up our income throughout the month, I like to just put it in a savings account that I call income parking. And I just throw all the paychecks in there just to keep them separate from everything else. And then on the 1st of April, I transfer the full balance in income parking over to our family checking account. So that's the way that we do it. I like to keep it separate because again, it kind of confuses me with like the balance that's in our checking account and all of that good stuff. So that's the way that we do it. And that amount that we are working at, working with this month is $7,057.23. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the actual as well because that does not change at all. And we'll just do that. And then I'm also going to put a spot for miscellaneous because you never know when you might earn a little extra income. There's nothing that I am predicting for this month, so I'm just gonna put zero. And that means our total income is $7,057.23. 7, so there is that. And I'm just going to center that a little bit more and be a little bit picky. Okay, there we go. <laughs> 
So that's income. Now the percentages that we're working with, and I believe I will explain this in the video that went up Sunday, but you can kind of figure out what percentages work best for you. I know when we were first figuring out our budget percentages, our goal was to live off of 75% of our income and to save, pay off debt, etc. with 25% of our income. We have reduced that down to 70%. So that is what we put towards expenses currently is 70%. Our goal is to continue to decrease that. So we're hoping eventually one day we can live off of 50% of our income. I feel like that would be really amazing. But right now it's at 70%. So what I'm going to do to figure out the amount is I'm going to take 7,057 and 23 cents and I'm going to multiply that by 0.7. And that amount is $4,940 and 6 cents. And then what we are currently doing is we're putting the other 30% towards savings. So we're pausing everything else pretty much until savings is taken care of because we are aggressively saving our emergency fund. Our goal is to get it to 25,000 by the end of the year at the very, very latest, hopefully sooner than that. But that is where the other, um, the other part of our income is gonna go. And then eventually, once our emergency fund is done, we'll start kind of splitting up the percentages more and everything like that, but that's what we're gonna do for now. So, 30% of the 7,057 and 23 cents is 2,000, $2,117.17. 17 and then when you add those together, it should equal your total income, and it does, because if you round up the two there, so we're gonna put that in as just a double check, so $7,057.23. Now, when you have 70% of your income going towards expenses, that doesn't mean you have to use that full amount. For example, we are not. <laughs> we are not using that full amount for our expenses because we don't need it. So in that case, you can apply that towards like extra savings. We're personally gonna put it towards a rollover, so I'll show you guys that in just a second. So those are our budget percentages. And then we get into our expenses. So we're gonna start writing in our expenses. So due on the first, we have our mortgage. And that amount is $1,563.28. And then also on the first, we have our HOA. And that is $111.95. And then as well on the first, we have our gym membership. And that amount is $90.45. And then we have Weight Watchers. I'm just gonna put WW. And that amount is $44 and 95 cents. Okay, and then we've got water and trash due on the six. We do pay for water and trash monthly. Water and trash. And I did receive the exact bill for that and that was $87.36. And then we have our Safeco Auto on the 15th. It's our auto insurance. Safeco Auto. 
and that amount is $67.95. Also on the 15th, we have our State Farm Life Insurance. And that amount is $38.70. And we've got Southwest Gas on the 19th. Southwest Gas. And that amount was $26.50. So that's heating for our house as well as our oven and things like that. And then we have CenturyLink due on the 20th. That's our internet provider. For $65. And also on the 20th, we have Massage Envy. I know, I know I was just talking about canceling this. We did decide to keep it because my back has been giving me a lot of issues and it does fit well within our budget currently, so we just decided to keep it for now after all this talk about canceling it, but that's okay. Okay, and then on the 23rd, yeah, on the 23rd we have Banner Life Insurance. The way I wrote it in my rough draft is kind of confusing, so, because I got some of the due dates wrong which you would think by now <laughs> I would know all these due dates like the back of my hand, but okay. And then finally for fixed expenses, we have Hulu on the 27th and that amount is $21 and 19 cents. So our total for fixed expenses is $2,204 and 55 cents. I'm actually just going to write this down here and then move it. So $2,204.55. I'll just move that up and center it. Okay, so that takes care of fixed expenses and then as those are paid, I have a little column where I can check them off, which is nice. And then we've got variable expenses. So there's only two bills that are considered variable, and that's T-Mobile, which is due on the 25th. And we're gonna budget $140 for T-Mobile. And then also on the 25th, we have APS, and I honestly like have no idea what to expect from APS, so I just keep overestimating. Even though it's been super low, I just, I don't know, I'm weary about it, so. And then that's it for bills. So then we've got our variable, variable expenses like grocery, and we're budgeting $500 for the month. And then stay tuned because next week, I believe next Tuesday, I will be sharing our April monthly meal plan and grocery haul with you guys. So very exciting stuff. And then we have gasoline, which gas has gone up in our area, but we don't really drive anywhere. So we're gonna keep it at 100. And then we've got eating out We're gonna budget $200 for eating out. We have household. The majority of our household items we get from Costco, but there are some things like, like floss picks and just different things like that that we also get, so um, certain cleaners, things like that. So we're budgeting $60 for household. And then we get into our cash categories. So we have Costco. And that is a cash category. And we're taking out $335 for Costco. 
Then we have haircuts. And we're putting 160 in there. That also covers like if Andrew goes and gets a nice shave, I go get my lashes done, other girls needing hair, well Julie doesn't need a haircut anytime soon, but Maddie definitely needs one. And then I go and get my hair done usually once or twice a year and it's pretty expensive when I go, so we try to just save that up. So it almost acts like a sinking fund. And then we have Andrew's pocket money. Oops. And then we have my pocket money. And Andrew's been waiting for me to film this video because he's wanting to go to the store tonight. And then we've got Maddie's commission. And you'll see we do not have an unbudgeted category anymore. Um, and that is because general savings is kind of taking care of a lot of that and then we also have our rollover. So for pocket money, we're budgeting $60 each for us. And then for Maddie's commission, we'll take out $20. So our total for variable expenses is $1,785. Okay, so now that is all set to go. So then you get into these little sections down here. And because we're not doing investments or giving right now, I think what I'm gonna actually do is I am going to take a little screenshot of a white square. We'll just save that image. And then I'm gonna pull that in. And we'll just cover that up for now. And I might put like a little picture or something there. Like look how that white square just boom, erases it. And you can do the same thing. So if there's certain things that you are not using at the moment, you can certainly do that. So I'm gonna actually go to my budget sticker sets and pull up the spring showers. And we'll just grab maybe this little like piggy or something. And we just like layer that on top. And then I could like write a quote or something, which actually, you know, what I could do is I could go to April and bring over that same little quote right here. And we'll just put that there. And then there, now we've got like a little, little filler for that space at the moment. So our two categories for savings are general savings, and our emergency fund. General savings essentially serves as like a spot for just sinking funds type of stuff. So clothes and school supplies and different things like that will come out of our general savings. So the idea is too that once we're done with our emergency fund, we will be putting quite a bit of cash into our general savings and then we will be investing as well and giving and all that good stuff. So. For general, we're putting $0 towards that this month. And then we're gonna put that full 2,000. I can just copy this. And we're gonna put that full 2,017 towards the emergency fund. And there. Okay, so our total going to savings is two thousand 
$2,117.17 or $2,117.17 is our total there. Okay, so now we can do our month end results down here and figure that out. So our total income is $7,000. $57.23. Our total expenses are $3,989.55. Our total savings is $2,117.17. Total investments is going to be zero. Total giving will be zero. And then that leaves us with a rollover of $950.51. And then the rollover, that will just go towards our next month's income. Um, or, you know, if we go over in grocery or something like that, it would also come from there, but um, from the rollover amount. So, because obviously, you know, the rollover will be impacted if there's a little bit more we can roll over, if there's a little bit less by our actual spending right there. But that is our monthly budget. So, again, we're going to be using budget percentages moving forward. This is something that we have always done. We've just never officially, like, put a name to it or anything like that. We just have always had sort of a goal and we didn't like track it track it super um, strictly or anything like that but yeah so that is how that is going to work and the reason why I like this method and there are tons of different methods out there there's so many there's Dave Ramsey there's a bunch of financial gurus that have their own methods and styles of doing things I just wanted to put a name to what we personally do. So if it's something that you're kind of wanting to do and implement as well for your family, you can. And finances are super, super personal, you guys. You have to just do what works well for your family. My method is not like the right method. I just wanted a way because we would really stress about well, what are we going to prioritize this month and all that kind of stuff. And this sort of takes the thinking out of that process because you're just going by your percentages. So as long as our expenses were at the very most, this amount or less, we're good. As long as we're putting this amount towards our savings, we're good. And again, our goal is to have our expenses be lower and then to be able to, once we're all done with our emergency fund, we want to start, you know, really focusing on investments and all that kind of stuff. But that is the monthly budget. And then on the weekly check-in page, we will track our groceries, our gas, our household, our eating out. And then I also wanted to set up um, the savings tracker. So I'm going to jump over to this page. Oh. And look, how convenient. <laughs> I already, apparently I already set it up. So um, for our beginning balances for general savings, and I mentioned this in my March budget results video, but we, from the extra money we received, we split that all up between general savings and our emergency fund. So our general savings, we brought that to a balance of $5,000. And we brought it to that balance because we are going to be spending a good chunk of change on dermatolo our daughter's uh, dermatologist to get skin treatments and things like that. So, and then we have our emergency fund. And those are our two savings accounts. Very, very simple. And the current balance for our emergency fund I don't even, I forgot to write it down. <laughs> I think it's 15,000 or no. It was, hang on one second. Cause this is before I put, I already put the money in there. So um, I need to do the current balance minus 211717. Okay, so the beginning balance of the emergency fund 
is $13,454.78. And we are adding $0 to the general. And for our emergency fund, we are adding $2,117.17. And then so our current balance in our emergency fund is the $15,571.95. And that's again because I already transferred that money over. So if we end up putting more in for some reason or whatever it may be, I'll mark that. But this transaction log over here is mainly to track any activity in our general savings account. So we kind of treat that as like a big lump sum um, sinking fund, I guess you could say. So we used to have like probably 20 <laughs> separate little sinking funds and I just honestly got a little irritated tracking each individual thing. It just felt very tedious to me personally. And so I decided to lump everything together. A lot of you guys actually gave us that idea and Andrew really liked it. So we tried it for the first time last month. We felt it went really well. So we're doing it again this month. And I just feel like it's simplified our lives so much. Like you have no idea so much. <laughs> so, and I feel like we're not like going overboard or anything like that. Um, Again, like our goal is going to be to put big chunks of money in there consistently every month and just let it build and build and build and it'll cover lots of different things. So there you have it. So that's a savings tracker. The next thing we're going to do now that we've got everything set up and I feel a little all over the place at the moment because this is the first time that we've like used this specific budget tracker and stuff. So, um, Okay, so we're gonna stuff our cash categories, which are right here, and I've got all of the cash right here. So I'm gonna put the cash in two specific places. Let me grab, I'm just gonna separate this out. And I'm gonna put some of the cash in here, and then I'm also going to put some of the cash in my actual purse with my cash dividers. So for Costco, that is actually going to go in here because we are going to let that build up. There are some items that we will be getting at Costco on a monthly basis, but most of the money will be saved to go and do a like big quarterly Costco haul. Um, our next one will be in June and I, I will be filming our large quarterly Costco hauls in addition to like our monthly hauls and things like that. There's not a ton that we get monthly from Costco, really just like Greek yogurt, eggs, you know, things like that. And then if there's like a particular sale um, item that is a really good deal, we'll pick that up. Um, it's kind of a way for us to not miss the sales as well. So for Costco, we're actually going to put 400 in there because we had $65 left over from last month. And instead of pulling out the 65 separate, I just pulled it out with everything else. And so if you add 65 to the 335, you have 400. So I'm just going to put the 400 in that little Costco section right there. So there it goes. And then let me see if I can like set that off to the side or something. I don't know. Okay, and then we have haircuts for 160. So for this, I took out some change as well. And let me just pull the haircut money we already have so I can combine it. So the haircut money we already have is 20, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70. And then we're putting another 160 in. So I did five 20s. So there's 100. And then I did four tens, so 140, and I did four fives for 160. So let's go ahead and add that. And you know what? I'm gonna just move this over <laughs> for now because it's all, all up in my space. <laughs> so, okay, so the fives are there, and then the tens are there, and the 20s are there. And I like to do change because we tip with cash as well. So now we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 230 in haircuts. 
and I'm just gonna put that in this little pocket here right underneath haircuts and then we have pocket money so we've got 20 40 and 60 for Andrew and then we've got 20 40 and 60 for me and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that straight in my purse and wrong way <laughs> okay so pocket money I've got these little dividers in here so I'm just gonna put that under here and I already had like four dollars right so yeah four dollars so now I've got sixty four dollars of pocket money for the month I might go get a pedicure with that potentially because I really need one so pocket money will go in there Commission money that will stay there. I think the $20 I took out is gonna go in here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And I'm just gonna put all of Maddie's, we're probably not gonna to need to take out any next month because I think we have quite a bit, but I'm gonna put it in there and we've got plenty of money to pay her for stuff. So that is all good to go. So. This will go in our family safe, and then my wallet is all set to go. So yeah, again, sorry if this video was a little all over the place. Um, this is the first month that we are using the new like budget method, and like I said, we're not necessarily doing anything super different per se, but I've had a lot of conversations with friends about this. Um, I don't, it's, it's always hard to just prioritize where you're putting your money and things like that. And I feel like this just kind of takes the thought process out of it. Like we're just going to put, you know, 30% towards our savings for the month. And we know that our priority between the general savings, the emergency fund is the emergency fund. If we were doing both, we could like split that 15%, 15% or 20%, 10%. You know, we can kind of decide what works best. And you have to kind of look at your percentages and the total amount. Like for example, if your income is $3,000 a month and your expenses are like $2,500 per month, then you wouldn't be able to, you know, do 70% of your expenses. You'd have to probably increase that, right? Like now that I'm, let me make sure I'm doing my math right. So that would be if your expenses are 2,500 and your income is 3,000, that's 83% of your income. So if you wanted to lower that, you would have to either increase your income or decrease your expenses. And you have to start somewhere, you guys. Like, there was definitely a time that we were living off of probably more than 80% of our income, like was going towards expenses. And eventually you learn where you can make cuts and you learn where, what you want to you know, prioritize and all that good stuff. So, I just really am trying to simplify my life right now. <laughs> and maybe this seems complicated to some of you guys. Um, I know it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. I totally know that. For me in my brain, it definitely makes sense because I just, I don't know. To me, it's like, okay, I've got 70% of my income to work with this month, so let's figure out how to make that fit. And if I have money left over, okay, cool. I can put that towards something else. It's just, like instead of having all these little tiny sinking funds everywhere and figuring out like where I, how much I can put towards the emergency fund and like, oh wait, but you know, I have to fill up all these sinking funds too. Like it's just, I don't know. I feel like this takes a lot of the thought process out. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm starting to get late. It's like almost nine o'clock and my brain starts to malfunction around this time. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. And like I said, if you haven't seen my video that I posted a couple days ago all about the Prosper Budget Method, definitely check out that video because that goes into much more detail. The whole thought process behind this, how it works, what the different steps are, and everything like that. Um, so definitely check that out, but yeah, that is pretty much it. You guys let me know what your goals are for April, your financial goals. I would love to hear about it and chat about it in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you have not already done so to catch my future videos and I will chat with y'all later. Bye. Bye.